Welcome to Transmissions. Whenever we do something which is favorable for the survival of this body, the mind produces a reward that is experienced as pleasure. Whenever we do something which is harmful for survival, the mind produces a punishment that is experienced as suffering. Whenever the situations are favorable for survival, same thing happens. And whenever they are not favorable for survival, punishment happens. This reward and punishment is driving our actions. And therefore we say that the purpose of our life is to get more and more rewards and to avoid punishments, to have less and less amount of punishments. Or in other words, the goal of our lives become pursuit of happiness because this reward is perceived as a state of happiness. Now it is very funny as well as strange that the reward is produced in the mind and the happiness is also perceived in the mind. The mind changes its states as a reaction to its own rewards. And this ensures survival, survival of the body. This is the basic working of an ego or the ego self, the egoic mind. Whenever we repeat a particular action, more rewards are produced. And when we repeat something which is not good for survival, more punishment is produced. And that trains this organism that is helpful for survival. So what this organism does is repeats that which produced rewards in past. And it avoids that, is fearful of that which produced punishment in the past. This is how the organism becomes bound. It becomes a slave of this reward and punishment process in the mind. If there is ignorance, if there is ignorance about what is my nature, what is my true nature, that mind is now identified with the body or whatever the bodies do. And so, the mind assumes that my purpose to stay alive is to get more and more happiness, to avoid suffering, to avoid the pain. And then it keeps repeating that which produced this so-called happiness. So we can see that the mind is trapped in its own process of producing rewards, avoiding punishments which it itself is imposing on this organism. We are not punished by something else. It is our own mind that produces this kind of punishment. The suffering is mind produced. It's created by the mind. Things or others, they do not give us pain. The pain is produced by the body, which is which some people think is me. That means you are yourself producing the pain. It is not coming from anything external. These mechanisms, they exist to ensure the survival and procreation of this organism. These are not the purposes of your existence. The happiness or the pursuit of pleasure is not our purpose. This can be a purpose of this body-mind, but that is not me. That is something which I have or that is something which I am currently experiencing. And this experience does not last as we know very well. It can end any time. The survival is not really 
geared for survival. This thing does not survive at all. It tries to survive and this desperate trying has resulted in these kind of processes of rewards and punishments to keep this organism going for as long as possible. So those who are deluded into thinking that this organism is me, this body-mind structure which is an illusory structure in the mind is me, they try to achieve this thing called happiness which is a state of the mind, which is an impermanent state of the mind by trying to repeat that which produced the happiness. Some who are less evolved, they try to get it back by doing something which is pleasurable for the body, like eating more, reproducing more, sleeping more, or warfare. Violence is a survival mechanism and it produces a pleasure when you kill your enemy. It does not matter if that enemy is your real enemy or somebody you were told is your enemy by your leaders. It produces the same reward. So some less evolved people, they are engaged in violence. They get the reward from there. Some more are engaged in egoic activities, social status, because that ensures survival. If you are well accepted in the society, if people are respecting you, if they lick your feet, that ensures the survival of this organism. And so people are engaged in the egoic activities to get this kind of social acceptance, to rise ab above every other organism in this society, to win the rat race, to become the winner rat. That gives them this pleasure, that gives them this happiness. There are some more, more evolved people who are pursuing intellectual actions, who are engaged in the artistic expression or scientific exploration, writing, singing and so on. These creative people, they derive their satisfaction or pleasure by creating. The mind produces the same reward when it achieves something which nobody has achieved. When it does something which is beautiful and extraordinary, the same reward is produced and the mind changes its state as a reaction to its own reward into a state of happiness. When a creative person cannot create or when nobody appreciates what he is creating, the mind produces a punishment. So even though that is a highly advanced activity of the mind, it is still a bondage. It is still a mechanism. It is the slavery of the mind that this activity is. There are some more people, they are even more evolved and they do not take so much interest in the worldly activities, in the bodily activities, in the social activities or even in the artistic activities. They are after knowledge, they are after truth and they are seeking answers to their questions. We call them the spiritual people. And the mind again produces a reward when you know something because knowing something which nobody else knows is a kind of survival advantage. And this has become refined for a spiritual person. When that kind of person is under ignorance or is told that, look, you do, you do not know many things, you are not awakened, you are not enlightened yet, the mind produces a punishment. The mind produces a state of suffering for that spiritual person. Although everything is fine in his life. So there is a broad spectrum of human activities that is merely a slavery of this process in the mind which is reward and punishment. Some are doing it through gross means. Some are doing it to relations, finding more and more relatives. That is a survival advantage, obviously, to be surrounded by people who like you or who want to protect you, who want to feed you. 
in the mind produces similar reward some are doing it for this society when you do something for other people the acts of altruism the mind produces a reward because if i am helping you there will be a time when you will help me this is altruism <laughs> it is not exactly selfless as many people would like to like to think it is also a survival mechanism in the mind we tend to support our own kind this is well known that has given rise to many more afflictions of the mind such as racism communism or sexism any kind of these mental diseases they are coming out of this reward that is generated in the mind when you help an individual of your own kind of course some of you must be thinking no i do not really support my own kind i support all the humanity well the humans are your own kind and then somebody will say no i support all the organisms all animals and i support the protection of environment also but it is again survival because the en- environment a good environment a healthy ecosystem ensures the survival of the humanity you are not doing it because it is of no consequence to your survival there is a consequence and that is why there is a favor for this activity for preservation of environment or of the animals and now you can see that uh, the human organism cannot do anything which is not survival which is not survival related even its happiness comes from the activity which results in survival of this organism this this organism is bound by survival only and this illusion of happiness is produced by this very mind you are not getting happiness from outside anywhere this very mind is producing its states of happiness or suffering it is happening inside you the activities simply reinforce the reward and punishment mechanisms in the mind some people have done this kind of experiments that you simulate if you stimulate the brain certain areas in the brain it produces the same kind of reward and punishment but it is very easy to pre- to produce the reward and punishment even without messing with the brain or mechanisms in the mind it is possible through the yogic means through some yogic meditations exercises you can generate that reward and demand the pleasure and pain are mechanisms of the mind it is very easy to hack them the only thing is if you do it without acting which results in better survival for you then the mind will keep producing it will keep producing the happiness but this organism will eventually die because the mechanism is now being artificially simulated in the mind although anyway it gives us a good insight about what this mechanism is the mechanism of producing happiness are you alive to feed this mechanism again and again and again there is something very interesting with this mechanism that if you repeat one action for a long time it stops producing the reward for example you like a certain kind of food and you are given that food once a week now the mind is going to produce a reward and you are living a very very happy life because you get what you like the kind of food you like survival plus happiness it is a win win situation but let us do it every day now you are fed the same food every day now you are going to enjoy it immensely for a month probably a week <laughs> after that you get tired of that food but let us say we serve that food we feed you with the same thing three times a day now you are going to vomit it out it will cause pain now the mind cannot handle it why if the happiness came from the food of certain kind what happened now wasn't that food your source of happiness food is same plus you are getting it more more than you can ask for why is it producing suffering now 
that should make it very very clear that the pleasure is being produced in the mind it is not coming from the food the mind perceived the food as is beneficial for survival that's why it was producing a reward now because you are eating the same food the mind somehow senses that it is not good for the health of this organism we need to eat a variety of food get more nutrients this is a mechanism in this body that it needs some things and when it does not get it it produces a punishment it produces pain as a consequence so the same thing which you thought was giving you happiness starts giving you suffering it is immense suffering this is because after a threshold the happiness production becomes less it plateaus and then it drops turns negative if you repeat the same activity and that is why when you watch a movie which is very entertaining it produces all kinds of rewards and you enjoy it you become happy watching that movie but you if when you are forced to watch it every day every hour then you can imagine what it will produce the same movie exactly the same piece of art that was produced at a cost of millions and billions is now generating extreme pain it's boring painful experience it is all in the mind you can see it same thing happens with the relations a new relation a new friendship a new love love affair is blissful is heavenly but only for few months few days sometimes as the mind gets accustomed to that other person it stops producing the reward now now the relations fail now the relations turn into a relation of hate because the mind starts picking out the bad qualities in the other person now cannot tolerate the other person this is another mechanism in the mind and therefore the relations like marriages they fail miserably it always becomes a compromise in the end somehow you tolerate the other person for the rest of your life we are being governed by these activities of the mind if the mind is itself producing and itself is trapped in this is the prison that we have created for ourselves you can be released from this prison very easily it is a matter of seconds actually when you realize that this is an illusion happiness is a mechanical affair in the mind you are freed from it now there is suddenly no need to please the mind there is suddenly no need to do this kind of slavery for the mind and then some people are going to ask now how, how am i going to survive because this is a survival mechanism don't worry you can you can survive just fine by you i mean this body mind all you need to do is do that is necessary for survival stop doing that which is totally unnecessary you don't need to eat one kg of food every day to survive little bit of food is enough you don't need 50 relations to please the mind please this mechanism in the mind to please your master who is now who has now become your master this mind has become your master now stop pleasing it stop doing the slavery for the mind you don't need to kill a million people and rule them to obey the commands of the mind the tribal tendencies of the mind all you need to do is kill that person who is attacking you kill that animal who is a threat to you you don't need to kill the whole countries you don't need to hate, hate anybody if you are driven by this desire to create works of art works of science that involve the intellect that can display the highest intelligence in you please do it by all means just don't worry about the happiness or the pleasure that you get from it fully realizing that the rewards or the punishments that are going to be a consequence of this activity are mind created this activity of creating is creating nothing except the work of art it is not creating pleasure it is not creating happiness and it is not creating failure pain or suffering if nobody accepts your piece of art if you invent something if you discover something in the scientific field 
will do it because it is useful not to get the happiness or pleasure out of it or do not suffer if it fails this is also called a state of equanimity we are not really after pleasure and pain reward and punishment or happiness or suffering what we desire is the state of equanimity when this mind is not bound by its own mechanisms that is the state of equanimity it is a state where you are totally content you are happy all the time and that happiness is not the happiness which is generated out of this reward and punishment system in the mind this kind of happiness is also called the bliss bliss is absence of both happiness and suffering bliss is absence of both pleasure and pain it is absence of both reward and punishment it is a recognition that these activities are of that of the mind not mine they don't belong to me i am only a witness of these activities of the mind i do not do them and i do not get anything from these activities of the mind the mind gets it the mind gets the reward the mind gets the punishment the mind gets the happiness the mind gets the suffering what is mind it's just an illusion all these things are illusory we get nothing what we get we get to watch these things that are happening it is like a drama it's like a play we are watching it and then we watch it with full equanimity although it will it will, it will not stop the activity of the mind it will keep generating the reward and punishment and all those things it is very very natural we need not stop it but then we yeah, but then we give rise to a new layer in the mind a layer of higher intelligence which is beyond these mechanisms of the mind which is higher than the mind itself this intelligence is filled with awareness awareness of what i am i am the observer i am the witness i am the consciousness of these activities of the mind i am not a slave of these activities simply watching them is not going to make me a slave of these activities it is an illusion that i am obeying the mind i am not really obeying the mind there is no need to stop the mind also because well it will stop the experience there is nothing wrong in stopping the experience but remember that this experience is impermanent it will stop by itself enjoy the experience while while it is there nothing wrong in the experience what is wrong is that ignorance stupidity fully identify identifying with this mechanisms that we are experiencing and doing all kinds of idiotic things to please our master the mind the mind has become a master for many people and they are suffering the happiness and they are suffering the suffering also that kind of mechanical happiness is not really the happiness what you are looking for is freedom from happiness and suffering and all other states of the mind you don't want to be affected by all the states changing states of the mind you're looking for equanimity you're looking for bliss the anand that is a consequence of not being a slave of the mechanisms of the mind that involves knowing my real nature i am not the mind i am not this body which is producing all kinds of pleasures and play pains this realization will bring the equanimity automatically the realization of true your true nature will bring the bliss automatically if you remove all these mechanisms of the mind all this activity of the mind the duality of the mind what remains obviously equanimity the bliss remains that is me my nature is bliss only my nature is pure bliss my nature is not a happiness seeking rat my nature is not a pain avoiding animal my nature is bliss when you are established in the bliss you are established in your true nature 
that is the sign that you are enlightened now. When you are running after pleasure and pain, reward, punishment, happiness and suffering, whatever moronic actions that happen, it is a sign of ignorance. It is a sign of darkness in your mind. Realizing the illusion of the happiness is freedom from ignorance. Thank you very much for listening. Asitola.